Six Meister presents What If Naruto Was a Senju? So, I know this is kind of like a weird movie to have considering the series isn't necessarily done. It's not going over any movie stuff. This is just like a all parts type of thing for what we have so far. And this is because in the future, I do plan on redoing this in a singular long form video where I cover everything all at once and if you want to see that make sure to smash like subscribe and comment down below because i am already working on it but i might not be releasing it until a little bit later but on the other hand i do want to remind you guys that this video does not have the greatest in audio quality but to nevertheless maybe give it a shot before putting it down this has been your boy six let's get things started This version of Naruto, although seeming simple enough, being a senju and all, his heritage is kind of complicated. Starting of course with the granddaughter of the first Hokage himself, Tsunade Senju, and her past boyfriend, or even fiancé, Don Kato, would have given birth to a child called Minato Senju, who would go on to become the fourth Hokage. Minato would then meet someone called Kushina Uzumaki, who would be the next bearer of the Nine Tails after Tsunade's grandmother, or his great-grandmother, as he would fall in love and thus have a child of his own in Naruto Senju. This is where things get rather odd, as there would have been an attack on the village, something unexpected by everyone before him as the nine tails would be ripped from his impregnated wife at the cost of him saving his son. This would result in a battle between Minato and a masked man, as the nine tails would rampage through the village, only being stopped by the third Hokage and Tsunade. In this timeline, Tsunade was present during this attack, being able to thwart off at least some of the nine tails attempts using her hundred healings technique on the other hand things would still go pretty grim even though the presence of asanin is noted minato and kushino would still both die sealing the nine tails with inside of their baby boy naruto but Unlike usual, this Naruto would not be left alone, as his grandmother, Tsunade, would have been present during the Ninetales attack, and thus would take her grandson in to raise him. As this goes and continues, the older Naruto gets, we see that Tsunade had been spending a lot less time on missions, and had been in the village for a majority of her time in any way. And when she was out on missions, the other child she was raising, Shizune, niece of her previous fiancé, Don Kato, would take a older sibling type of role in attempting to help raise Naruto. On the other hand, this would obviously create a close relationship between Shizune and Naruto, and eventually they would even train together as Tsunade would start Naruto off with basic chakra control exercises at the age of 4 to get him prepped for what the shinobi world would be like, as she does want him to strive in things like the academy, since clans are usually allowed to take their representatives, in this case Naruto, and teach them the ways of their clan. Obviously, Tsunade cannot teach Naruto about wood style or anything like that, since it had not yet become apparent that he had hold of the Keke Genkai. But nevertheless, Naruto would start off his training strong. He would also occasionally look at what Tsunade is teaching Shizune, and would try and mimic it himself more often than not, either resulting in an explosion or just a straight failure. On the other hand, this is when Tsunade starts becoming more diplomatically active, as obviously Hiruzen would ask her to accompany him to things like Danyo meetings or meetings with other villages, since she is spending a lot of time at the Leaf. On the other hand, I feel as a year or so would have progressed past this point, Jiraiya would actually encourage Tsunade to take up the chair of Hokage, 
Peruzin is getting old, and there's no better time than right now for her to become Hokage. They're in a point where there is almost pure peace, except for the trouble that had just happened with the cloud, obviously referring to Hinata's uncle or Hiyashi's brother, Neji's father, being killed because of the cloud attempting to kidnap Hinata. But nevertheless, this is still a time of semi-peace as no wars have been threatened or declared and villages are kind of at a standstill. Right now would be the perfect time for her to take up the seat with little responsibility, at least until someone worthy pops up. Obviously, we have a child Naruto who actually still wants to become Hokage, this time to honor the name of his father and clan, as even their mighty first Hokage was a part of this noble clan. Thus, he wants to become either the 6th or 7th Hokage. Tsunade would have picked this up and would actually think that it would be good for Naruto and possibly even herself if she took up the role of Kage, thus she would do it around Naruto being the age of 6. So we see her entire Hokage crowning ceremony and so on and so forth as she does start spending less and less time with Naruto and Shizune, which of course would leave Naruto feeling semi-neglected if it weren't for Shizune using every off moment from her missions to teach Naruto whatever she can. I would like to point out around this time Shizune would not be a child anymore as she would be in her early 20s or exactly 20 by the time Naruto turned 6. So she would have probably either been a high level Chunin or even a Jonin by now. Thus I think Naruto has a lot to learn from her. But nevertheless, she cannot always be present, the same for Tsunade. So I feel Naruto would do everything he can to train on his own, trying to become like his father, a prodigy, and someone who can do anything if they put their mind to it. And thus, Naruto would be left with a lot of time to fill with the current neglect from his grandmother, neglect being a strong term, her being Hokage makes her very busy, and on the other hand, Shizune at this point is probably in her early 20s, meaning that she is probably a Haichunin or Jonin with a medical background, meaning she has a lot of uses on the battlefield. So I feel that Shizune will pop in maybe once or twice a week, with Tsunade at this point barely even coming home, and when she does, she goes straight to sleep. I feel Naruto would every now and then go to the Hokage Manor to try and talk to his grandmother, try and get her to teach him something, but more often than not, I assume he would be off sad. Thus, he would be spending a lot of time training on his own, and I feel eventually he would wander off to try and find someone else to train with. And this, in my mind, is what would lead to what I'd assume to be him coming across other shinobi training, possibly even something like an Ambu Battleground, or just some Chunin or Jonin. Because why I want this to happen is for him to see someone use either Earth or Water style, preferably Earth, so that he could start mimicking it. On the other hand, I think he would start doing so by the first jutsu being something like Earth Wall, since I do see this being more likely than something like the Headhunter, since it's most efficient against people like Genin. So, to start off with, I would want Naruto to practice the Earth Wall, which in my mind makes sense. Him constantly practicing he the jutsu, he saw someone else do. I feel when he gets it down, gets a roundabout aptitude, he would want that little bit of attention from his grandmother that he had not been getting lately, probably whilst a few months had passed, and he would go to the Hokage Manor, and he would start pestering her. Of course, she would get mad at first, but Naruto just wants her to come with him this one time so he could show her this one thing. She would feel bad for her grandson knowing that she hasn't been home lately, so she could take a few minutes out of her day to just do what he wants. Maybe they can have ramen after this and then she can get back to work. So she would go along with her grandson to the nearest training ground when he says, look at this, as he flies through the hand signs as quickly as he could. 
pushing as much chakra into this jutsu or channeling as much chakra as he can possibly into this jutsu eventually even falling to his knee as more and more chakra is being channeled when a giant line of trees emerge from the ground spreading into the air blossoming as it comes out this leaves both naruto and tsunade in shock he had only intended to make the biggest earth wall possible since he wanted to impress his grandmother but trees why are there trees Tsunade knows exactly what this is, and with the knowledge of what this is comes some sort of guilt, as she realizes that it's been a few months since she's even properly sat down and eaten with Naruto, that's why she came out here. But seeing that he was able to discover the Keke Genkai once held by her grandfather, the first Hokage, one of the greatest shinobi of all time, and probably one of the strongest Keke Genkai of all time, and her having nothing to do with it... It made her feel some sort of way. And she knows her as a Hokage can't leave all the time to teach Naruto wood style. So she'll come up with a compromise. She would then tell Naruto that he should go home and rest as she would call forth a strange Ambu with a weird headdress similar to the second Hokage's and brown spiky hair. He would take Naruto back to the Senju compound with Naruto wondering if his grandmother is mad at him for doing it wrong or wasting her time, so he is left to wonder. Which, after the Ambu, will return to the Hokage Tsunade, and she would most likely, this specific Ambu, obviously being Tenzin or Yamato, as she would tell him to remove the mask and tell him that he is now known as Yamato. For the foreseeable future, he will be Naruto's sensei, guide, and protector, as now having awakened wood style might make him a target. Yamato would gracefully accept as he had always wanted to interact with someone else that held this odd Kekagenkai he was in possession of. So, he would happily take the task. Some odd days would pass before Tsunade gets a chance to introduce Naruto to his new instructor, Yamato. Obviously, Naruto would at first think this is just a replacement for Tsunade not being there, until Tsunade tells Tenzin or Yamato to show off his skills. He would go through some hand signs as a giant wooden dragon would burst from the ground behind him, swirling around him, and then almost freezing into place as the head of the dragon blooms into leaves, leaving behind a sorrel tree. Naruto would be impressed by this and asked if he messed up the earth style jutsu or if it was something else, with Tsunade laughing, seeing as her grandson thought his powerful Keke Genkai was nothing but a flop while trying to do an earth style jutsu. She would explain that Naruto's great-great-grandfather, or the grandfather of hers, the first Hokage, had actually held the wood style and was one of the most powerful shinobi in the world because of it. And hopefully Tenzin, or she would say Yamato, would be able to help Naruto flourish this. The academy starts soon and she wants him to start off knowing where his limits are. She doesn't want him fighting fights he can't win, and he doesn't want... She doesn't want him to hurt any of the other students by not knowing what he is capable of. So, for these remaining months until the academy starts, he will be daily training with uh, Yamato until he can control his power. So, Naruto would probably mindlessly accept this as he would get a chance to train and become stronger to show off to his grand, uh, grandmother and possibly his big sister, or who he sees as a big sister, Shizune. This is where an interesting dilemma comes in, since we do know Jiraiya is in Naruto's life, but he will most likely not play that big of a role until later on. So for now, the training between him and Yamato would suffice. Yamato would obviously teach him basic things about wood style, but I do not think it's anything like the wood clone. That does seem a little more complicated since you are constantly morphing how the wood looks, how it moves, and so on and so forth. Things that wood wouldn't be able to do. So I think basic jutsu like maybe a wood bullet, wood shield, wood domes, um, wood walls, how to sprout trees... 
maybe the occasional taijutsu fight with your arm turning into wood and so on and so forth. So basic things that Yamato could do. Naruto is still not even in the academy, keep that in mind. That's why he won't be doing that advanced stuff quite yet. But inevitably, the academy day would come. It would be early morning in Konoha as Naruto wakes up and prepares for his first day at the academy. He puts on his favorite clothes and looks to the kitchen as he wants to go make some breakfast. But first, the smell hits his nose. Someone's already doing it. He runs to go see whom it is to see his grandmother, Tsunade, standing there making him breakfast. After he would sit down and she would serve, they would have a small conversation. Obviously, Naruto asking her where she's getting the time to do this, as she should probably be in office right now, and her explaining that this is a very important day for Naruto as a shinobi. So, she decided to take the day off, and thus deliver him to school, and afterwards, she'll pick him back up, as she wants to see him become one of the greats, like her grandfather and his father. Naruto would have a giant smile on his face as he jumps up, prepared to leave. But first, Tsunade stops him. She takes him to a back room within the Senju compound and shows him a piece of armor. She says that it's not the one worn by her grandfather or his father, but instead the great Tobirama Senju, the second Hokage. And she believes that he would want Naruto to have this, as he's a genius in the making. Naruto would grab it, fitting it on himself, pulling all the belts tight so that it would fit his small body, as he feels excited. Tsunade would give a laugh and say that he'll eventually grow into it. So maybe leave it here for for today. With Naruto smiling, saying, Yeah, okay, I'll grow big and strong real fast. As he would be excited to go to his first day at the academy once again. Halfway to the academy, they would be met with Yamato, Naruto's current teacher, and even Shizune. All the important people within Naruto's life are taking uh, him to the start of what you can consider his true life or his true life calling. And as he runs off into the academy, with a giant smile, he turns back, waving them off as he runs into the center of the academy to be prepared for his first day. Naruto would near the assembly hall as he would feel every eye on the room on either him or another individual. This individual is unknown to him for now as it is a raven-haired boy with a blue shirt, the Uchiha symbol smacked on his back. He would try to remember back as his grandmother had explained to him every important individual within his class as he starts naming them off in his head. Hinata Hyuga, Kiba and Azuka, Shino Aburame, Choji Akimichi, and so on until he eventually gets to Sasuke Uchiha. He'd say, that's it, as he would run up to Sasuke saying, you're Sasuke, right? My name's Naruto. Naruto sends you. As Sasuke would look him up, uh, look up and down at him as he tries evaluating the young Senju, as he finally lets out a laugh from his stern look, saying, Well, Naruto, you look like an exciting person. My name's Sasuke Uchiha. Nice to meet you. And, for the first time in a while, they have a proper meeting, you could say. As the teachers start appearing... Students are split into classes. Luckily, Naruto and Sasuke are right next to each other, even in the seating chart, as they would fist bump, having been each other's official first friend in the academy. Then, the Hokage, Tsunade, would come up and give a grand speech about the starting of everyone's shinobi life. And then, they would depart to classes where they would start activities. This is where we start spontaneously jumping across the timeline, as there are very few events to cover that happen during the time of the Academy. But the major ones will come up soon. As we see, students would start learning things that the Academy only has to offer. Naruto and Sasuke would probably be leading in all of these, as if they probably not learned something like advanced ninjutsu yet, and are probably still in that phase where they are 
between Taijutsu battles and learning how to channel Chakra, with Naruto and Sasuke already being capable, thus them getting higher scores than most. Naruto would also be forced not only by Tsunade on her very few off days, but Shizune on her more common off days to study, and Yamato will always be there to remind him once again. As we see, we see Naruto and Sasuke either being first or second in the class, depending on who got the best score on the last test, since they have perfect Taijutsu and Ninjutsu scores, at least for now. And Naruto and Sasuke would kind of be best friends and rivals at the same time, since every time they fight, they look like they're having fun, and it's either one or the other that wins. It's not really one over the other in any of these situations, since Ninjutsu, for right now, is prohibited. And one inevitable day, the Uchiha clan massacre would occur, having left Sasuke to not come to school for weeks, maybe even a few months, as he is still in grievance of his family. Naruto, in curiosity, a few weeks later, would obviously go to his grandmother, the first line of information, as he wants to know what happened to the Uchiha clan exactly. Maybe there's something he can do to help Sasuke, and so on and so forth. But Tsunade would not spill a single bit of information, leaving Naruto to wonder what's happening to his new friend. When Sasuke would inevitably return to school, he's a lot more colder and a lot more grim. Every time Naruto would try to talk to him, he would scoff and walk away, probably because he doesn't want any more attachments, or anyone that can get killed leaving him to grieve for them. Naruto wouldn't exactly catch on to this, as he would now focus all the attention and all the time he spent with Sasuke purely on training to get better and develop. And thus, he would finally get down his uh, clone jutsu and transformation using wood style, thanks to Yamato, since we do know both wood transformation and wood shadow clones, or wood clones, are a thing. Obviously, he could just graduate at this point, knowing all the jutsu, and probably having enough knowledge to do all the tests, but instead, Yamato would encourage him to stay in the academy and grow stronger so that he can more quickly climb through the ranks. Since he had already learned what the academy had to offer, Yamato could teach him more advanced ninjutsu skills, and at that, some more academical ones too so that when the day of graduation comes, Naruto would be in a better situation. Naruto now stands faced with the ramifications of leaving the academy. He has no friends and no one to coerce with except for the occasional meeting with Tsunade and Shizune and spending almost every waking moment with his sensei, Yamato. This would inevitably lead to Naruto becoming a much stronger shinobi much earlier in his career, as he would most likely now graduate before the rest of the people within his class. Even though Yamato had initially told him to hold back for a while, there is nothing more Yamato could teach him since he was borderline already on tuning level. So, two years prior to the rest of the Genin, Naruto would become a Genin himself. With very few students actually knowing of Naruto's graduation, and more likely than not, Sasuke would not actually be one of these. I feel these would be individuals like maybe Shikamaru, Choji, Ino, Hinata, Kiba, and so on. People who have council parents that can give them this information. But to move on, we see that Naruto and Yamato now are faced with a dilemma. Yamato is forced to give Naruto a test and would thus create two wood clones that are transformed before Naruto's appearance to trick him into thinking that these two would be his teammates. Since he had a prior ask Kakashi what type of test he could give a student to really see what they're capable of. Kakashi would not have even at the time known he's talking about Naruto, as he would say, there's always the bell test. You give two bells to three students and tell them they need to get the bells to be able to pass. This would cause a dilemma of them splitting away from each other, where in fact none of them are capable of even in pairs of two defeating a Jonin. So if they're able to overcome these differences and thus fight together, knowing that one of them will not become a Genin, that's when you pass them. It actually doesn't have anything to do with the bells. Yamato would smile, saying, that's perfect. Especially for Naruto. Naruto's hot-headed, thinking that he can do everything on his own. This will be a life lesson. 
as Yamato would be off. Kakashi would try and go, wait, you mean Naruto? Wait, I was about what Yamato was long gone at this point. So we next see Yamato's clones, or who Naruto believes to be other students in Naruto, being explained the events of the bell test, or how they perspire, and how they will be executed. They would all jump to the trees as the two other students, or at least the clones, try to coerce Naruto into working together. Naruto at first would say, no, nah, I think I got this, as he would throw his strongest current wujutsu, which is a giant wooden dragon, not on the level of, say, the water dragon of Zabuza's, but about half its size. He would have chucked it towards Yamato, clearly giving away their position as Naruto would say, okay, then do your work, I guess, as he jumps back, leaving the two clones to fight Yamato. Yamato himself would think that the teamwork didn't work, and so would the clones, as they think Naruto had abandoned them. But inevitably, after the two clones start fighting Yamato as a subtest, I guess you could say, Naruto would jump in trying to gang up, as he would finally grab the bells. Yamato would be surprised that Naruto was able to outspeed him, but he himself had never been the fastest. And Naruto would throw the two bells to the other two clones, saying, you can decide who passes. I can come back in two years or so and become a genin then. As he would walk away, with the clones turning to pure wood, and Yamato calling Naruto back. Naruto would be surprised that these were in fact wood clones and not actual people, as he would question his sensei, with Yamato explaining that there had to be a test of sorts, and due to one of his friends, he had found that this would be the perfect test for Naruto. Naruto, yes, had shown immense skill within this fight, being able to end it within the first few minutes, but nevertheless, he still technically worked together with the clones to accomplish it. Thus, he's ready to become a shinobi, since in the world of shinobi, teamwork is most important. And then he would go on to quote Kakashi on, Those who do not complete their missions are scum, but those who abandon their friends are worse than scum. Basically, ending off this entire situation. At first, it would take some time to officialize Naruto's one-team situation or two-member team consisting of only a genin and a jonin. So in the political department, it had taken some time before Naruto and Yamato were actually allowed to go on missions. After they are eventually cleared, Yamato would stay close to things like D-rank missions, which consist in the village or take place in the village as a promise to Tsunade to make Naruto think this is some form of team building to sharpen them working together before they go into actual action. Even though I did say that Yamato had nothing left to teach Naruto, there are instead still things Naruto has to learn. Yamato cannot teach him anything new in forms of controlling his wood energy or nature chakra or whatever you want to call it. I know it's not nature energy. I apologize. I misspoke. But you get the gist. Naruto can still learn actual jutsu, things he wouldn't know he'd be able to do by either without either experimenting or being shown that he is capable of performing this. So Yamato would use this as a distraction, splitting out one day missions, one day training in opposed to their usual everyday training so that he could keep Naruto in the village as long as possible. But inevitably, Naruto would probably have a breakout when being given yet another D rank. At this point, it would probably be around his 30th D rank, having lasted about two months he would finally break, demanding that he has some job that actually puts him and Yamato at a test since he understands if he needs to continue doing D-ranks, but Yamato is a whole Ambu or a whole Jonin. So why they keep putting Yamato down by forcing him to do these menial tasks, he doesn't know. But on part of his sensei, he feels offended. And even on part of himself, he feels he can do at least something more complicated like send me to chop off trees in a forest or something maybe kill a grizzly bear like those always seem to bother people Tsunade would now take a deep breath knowing that this time was always meant to come for Naruto to eventually go out into a real mission she would look over at Aruka who was sweating at this point 
he would nod and give her a scroll that he had been keeping on him. This had been a C-rank mission that seems pretty simple, as she would give it to Yamato. She glares at Yamato and says, you know what will happen, with Yamato gulping. As he knows she means, if Naruto gets hurt in any capacity, Yamato will lose his life. So Yamato knows to take care of Naruto. And as he opens the scroll, he himself gasps, saying that, no, we, we can't take this on immediately. Naruto would jump up saying we could take on anything. So he would open the scroll to see that they will be clearing out a team of bandits with suspected Genin level shinobi. He would not see any problem with this himself as Yamato could obviously take out the Genin with ease and him the bandits since bandits are still just normal people. He would say that okay we'll do it granny as he slaps the scroll back onto the table running off to go prepare for their first mission. Yamato would fall over or at least to lean over as he says why do you have to do this to me lady Tsunade? we both know that there might be higher level shinobi on that quest and then it might be upgraded to a b rank so naruto has a heightened chance of getting hurt he would basically be anime crying at this point as Tsunade would say why so worried tenzo i thought you could handle it since you were an ambu before this with him merely gulping saying of course, Lady Tsunade, as he would be off. Iruka would finally talk to Lady Tsunade after both Naruto and Tenzo had cleared the way, and would ask why Tsunade would put Naruto on such a high-risk mission after threatening Yamato. She would explain that she's held back Naruto long enough, so giving him a proper mission to test his strength, for he did still graduate two years early and had the ability to do it two years earlier than he already did. So this is merely her giving him a chance to prove his worth to the village. Iruka would nod in understanding as even though it opposes his opinion, he still thinks Tsunade has a point. Thus, he would step back and continue giving out missions since there's still a lot to do, at least for today. But how exactly this mission would go is unclear. As next we see Naruto, he stands in the middle of a forest in front of a giant tower. He slaps his hands together, screaming, 1,000 wooden clones! As an amount of clones appear, we can only assume to be 1,000. They would jump into the trees and cover the fields, as we see shinobis falling left, right, and center. From brilliant tactics, fighting strategy, and guerrilla warfare, we see that Naruto had defeated every shinobi in sight. What exactly is happening, you might wonder, is this is the final bout of Naruto's tuning exams, an all-out battle royale being witnessed by nobles and daimyo alike. At first, it seems like Naruto had just come in and ended it early, but instead, Naruto, near the start, had run up to the top of this great tower in the middle of the forest. Being observed by Danyo and Noble alike once again, Naruto would have gathered enough chakra to jump down the tower and activate his jutsu, thus ending not only the exam, but impressing every member of the audience, since he had cleared this near single-handedly. As the audience cheer, we see Sensei talking to their student, telling them that they just had off luck. But one particular group stands out. It is led by a man coveted completely in green, with bushy hair bros and a bulb cut. This is Mike Guy and his team. As he says, See, I told you not to participate, no matter how strong you are. For right now, none of you would have been able to defeat Naruto. As one of his students would scream out, Yes, Guy Sensei, but I will become strong enough to one day stand face to face with the young Senju. As the two would have covered into tears, with one exaggerating his own power over that of the Senjus, saying that the Hyuga deserve more presence as they are in fact the strongest clan in Konoha obviously being in pure number, as the Senju and Uchiha, of course, having been in their prime, two of the strongest clans in the world, if not the strongest. And thus, once again, we fade away, as a familiar sight appears. I've seen that mask before. 
It's the same guy with the orange mask that killed Yamato Sensei. I remember when I had first become a tuning. Me and Yamato Sensei were sent to trap the Three Tails, who had recently either reformed or broken loose. When we ran into some strange individuals wearing black robes with red clouds on them, when he appeared, the two others who had been accompanying the masked man stood back as he pulled out a chain binded kunai. I remember yelling at him to back away as he plunged into Yamato Sensei's back. Oh, Naruto, my student. What's that? It's more powerful than you would ever believe. But it's not worth dying here today. <sighs> Head back to the leaf and I want Lady Tsunade that the Akatsuki had made their first move. After the death of his sensei, Yamato Naruto would proceed to grow a strong hatred for the group that bears red clouds or scarlet clouds upon a black robe. The group we know as the Akatsuki. He would inform his grandmother that this group had in fact attacked a tailed beast and are probably on the route of getting him he himself. Thus, she would issue an order to send out immediate notice to all the surrounding villages and also to hear from the mist on the death of their Kage, which was rather spontaneous and unexpected. Later on, after some time had passed, Naruto, who would consider himself done griefing, would be one to put back into the loop on the group, and would thus discover that the Leaf had found new allies within places like the Cloud, Mist, and other villages like the Sand, who are interested in not only teaming up with the Leaf, but making the Shinobi world a better place, since the Akatsuki are out for blood. This would also lead to Jiraiya making the discovery outside of the village that the Akatsuki were also responsible for the entire Blood Mist incident and Yagura's tyrannical rule. This would also have left a opening for Mei Terumi, the leader of the rebellion and the cause of the Three Tails release, to become the new Mizukage. And with a new Mizukage comes new alliances. The Mizukage, the Raikage, Hokage, and Kazekage, or at least whom they believe to be, all create a treaty, a treaty of four villages. At first, the Raikage had tried to bring Iwa, or the stone, into this treaty as well, but the old man is still as negligent as ever and would rather deny the help. So the stone is left with two rogue Jinshuriki and need to deal with it on their own. So the rest of the Kage, at least for now, are not interested in helping the stone until they succumb and add to the alliance. This alliance could be the biggest one since the start of time, since the Hokage had also sent word to places like the Waterfall, who also believed that their Jinshuriki is unsafe and would also agree to such terms, you could say. Thus, it would lead us into a situation where the Kage have formed a premature four shinobi alliance or four Kage, four village, four nations alliance, whatever you want to call it, since it is not all nations quite yet. At first, Naruto would be in a state of grief, probably being inactive as a shinobi for months at a time. The only time Naruto would remove himself from his bed is when he very rarely ate and then trained in some sort of a dummy throwing himself fashion. And let me elaborate. He would take it upon himself to take every form of responsibility in sight and push it onto his own shoulders. And for the flashback to Yamato, he was able to visibly see the blade coming yet could still not do anything. So, he had been training jutsu, his own reflexes, and so on and so forth, to either block or take a hit like that, to hopefully save someone's life, as he feels responsible, and even blames not only the Akatsuki, but himself for Yamato's death. But nevertheless, as time goes on, Naruto would train more often, and keep himself secluded less. And within this time frame, his grandmother Tsunade would find time to talk to him. 
At this point, Tsunade would convince Naruto to come back to the Shinobi forces, as not only would he be a lot more safe with other Shinobi constantly surrounding him, since she is worried for her grandson's health, but she really does think he should continue his shinobi training, even if only to honor his sensei's memory, since she thinks even Yamato would be disappointed in Naruto if he had found out that Naruto had quit being a shinobi because of his death. This would push Naruto enough to want to return to the force, but he would ask to be put into a either larger squad that will take on lesser missions and have a lesser probability of death you know people he can save or on the other hand being put into a solo team where he can do missions alone this is when Tsunade would orchestrate a deal Naruto could go on solo missions and even have a solo squad if he is able to work with a team up until the next tuning exams Naruto would mindlessly agree because this means he could work with a team, meaning either a team of Chunin and a Jonin, or a team of Genin. So either people with enough skill to keep themselves safe, or on the other hand, people that won't be put in that dangerous of a scenario. So he would accept and thus be placed on Team 7. I will once again remind you this version of Naruto had graduated early and as of right now is currently a tuning. So him being placed on team 7 would be some sort of a filler position as in other ways Sasuke and Sakura would have been alone on the team. But through Kakashi asking if Naruto could be placed on his team or even if he could solo train Naruto with the death of his old comrade and Naruto sensei Yamato or Tenzo. So when the pieces fell together it all came a front with Naruto now being placed in our team 7. I would like to point out Naruto would not actually be at the graduation ceremony, but instead in that after the week after the graduation, at that point where they're assigned their senseis, Naruto would be sent by Kakashi, having probably met him prior, to take Sasuke and Sakura up to the roof. Naruto has not actually been on any missions with Kakashi quite yet, but he does have respect for his superiors, so he would do as his sensei commands. So, at first, as Iruka basically names off all the teams, the first person to actually enter to get a team is Naruto, sporting his Chunin garb. He would say, Team 7, Team 7, Sakura Harano, Sasuke Uchiha, come with me, as he would walk out the door. Obviously, Sasuke does not know who this is, nor does Sakura, or at least at first. After thinking for a second and hearing the surroundings, they can confirm that this is actually Naruto, as in Lord Naruto Senju. Sakura would have heard things of him becoming a shinobi, but had shrugged it off to him probably quitting the academy or something similar. On the other hand, Sasuke had completely forgotten about his old best friend and is now curious. Naruto at a point was the only person that could actually keep up with him in the academy, but after the death of his clan, Naruto mysteriously vanished and Sasuke pushed it to the side just like he did the death of those close to him. He forgot about it. On the other hand, we hear whispers from all the clan heads and even some uh, minor students, I guess you could say, that have parents that are even half influential, basically giving us the information that Naruto is actually a tuning. This would hit Sasuke's ears as he's about to leave the room and would say, what, he's a tuning out loud. Sakura would also find it hard to believe as she always acts as Sasuke's tail and they would start sporadically questioning Naruto. He would ignore them and just continue walking, basically forcing them to follow. As the team had left the room and the door had been closed, Iruka would hear his class all go on about how they're so lucky to be on a team with Naruto and so on and so forth, since having an experienced shinobi like that, not as your sensei, but as a teammate, will give you a large advantage when it comes around to something like the tuning exams. Maybe Sasuke and Sakura would become tuning quickly. Ino would obviously shut down the Sakura becoming a tuning part, but would definitely support the Sasuke becoming a tuning part still. On the other hand, we hear some whispers and would figure that 
Everyone here is basically voting for Sasuke and Sakura to be this year's tuning, since as they have a teammate that already went through the test, they would be at a large advantage taking part in it themselves. So, to move forward, we see Naruto up on the roof as Sasuke and Sakura would sit. They would ask questions, but he would answer only one. Sasuke would answer, where have you been? With Naruto literally replying with suffering, and thus he did not say anything else. Some hours would pass and more questions about Kakashi's whereabout would float, with even Naruto wondering where the sensei is, for Kakashi to only eventually appear on the roof. This is where we'd get that classical scene of what are your dreams, hopes, desires, and so on and so forth, with everybody giving off their thing. At first, Sakura would ask Kakashi to give an example, but Naruto would step in instead. Saying that his likes have nothing to do with him, his dislikes are very few, and his dreams are unknown to even him. As he would then motion towards Sakura to do her thing. She would say that her likes are, she would laugh, look at Sasuke, her dreams are laugh and look at Sasuke, and then when she gets to dislikes, she'd say, Eno Pig, of course, as she would jump up with a fist of fury, and so on and so forth. This would leave Kakashi in a motion of, or a notion of, oh, a fangirl. Not knowing that Naruto was having the exact same thought. But, on the other hand, when Sasuke gets to it, it's somehow even worse than the fangirl. He would explain that his dream is to rebuild his clan and kill a certain someone. And near simultaneously, Naruto and Kakashi would out loud, for accident, say, Oh no, he's an emo. Basically then looking at each other as they didn't expect this. This would leave them both in a giggle as Naruto doesn't usually have these moments. It kind of cheers him up when things like this happen since him and Yamato used to do this a lot. So, Kakashi would explain what would perspire the next day and tell them not to eat. Naruto would laugh at Kakashi and as Kakashi disappears, Naruto would follow suit. Obviously, retrospect, both of them are using the body flicker. As they get a well distance away from the school, Kakashi would ask Naruto what he had laughed about with Naruto saying, you know I'm gonna eat, right? Like, I already am a Ganin, I'm forced to be here. Uh, I don't know about them, if you want me to help them, sure, I'm not gonna tell them what to do because Yamato Sensei did this test, and so on and so forth, with Kakashi merely giggling saying, we'll know what to do by tomorrow as it fades off into the sunset. As the next morning comes, Naruto, as per usual, could be found at his favorite eating place, Ichiraku Ramen. He would discover, a few years ago, that this is the place where Jiraiya had initially come up with the name for his novels or his first novel's main character. He named him Naruto. And later, Naruto's father, Minato, would name his son that Inversa, as a homage i guess to the character himself hoping that his son would just be as great of a warrior as that character was and naruto has proven so at least in jiraiya's mind on the other hand naruto had just consumed about three bowls of miso ramen as he would thank Tayuchi, aka the ramen guy and be off to team seven's training ground as he arrives on the training ground he sees sakura and sasuke present and at first, Sakura would scold Naruto for being late, with Naruto saying, I'm not here for the test. That's you. I've already passed mine. Now, shut the hell up before I punch you in your face so hard that you get knocked the fuck out. Or at least the most similar thing to that that Naruto could say within this situation. As per usual, Kakashi would arrive an hour or two late, maybe even many more hours than that. But as he does, he would explain. He would request Naruto partake in the test and would explain as the test would begin, their goal and only goal is to get one of two bells. One of them would obviously fail, and this failure would be sent not back to the academy, but suspended from all shinobi duties. As Naruto is here, and seeing as he's already a chunin, he can't be sent back to the academy. Or at least, I would assume not. 
On the other hand, this is where Kakashi would tell them to start. Everybody would jump back into the trees with Naruto already having the knowledge of what happens within the bell test. So it would probably be a case of Sasuke attacking up front to Kakashi and Kakashi one-sidedly overwhelming him. Sakura most likely still getting caught under a genjutsu, but in this case, I do see Naruto breaking her out. On the other hand, I feel Sasuke at this point would have realized that he would not be able to beat Kakashi on his own, so would seek out the stronger of two, being Naruto, to team up to hopefully grab one of the bells. On the other hand, by the time Sasuke reaches Naruto, he would have already have freed Sakura from a genjutsu and made a similar alliance. Sasuke would ask to join this alliance of sorts and in turn offers a... How do I say it? He offers a standstill as there are three of them and still only two bells. He says the two that are able to grab bells are the two that get to graduate and they would all mutually agree. But as this agreement is dropped, Naruto would jump out of the trees and walk straight past Kakashi to where we see the food in front of the three stumps. Sakura and Sasuke would shortly follow as they're confused, thinking this might be some sort of strategy to jump Kakashi, but Kakashi would congratulate them on passing the test. At first, they would be confused, but Kakashi would go on to explain. The meaning of this test was not actually for them to obtain bells, but to work together as a team. And through the collective effort of Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura, they had achieved this without actually needing to fight. So thus, he gives his speech about how those who abandon their mission are scum, but those who do such to their friends are even worse than scum. And thus, it leaves them with a life lesson taught. Naruto already chowing into his food, of course, now joined by a hungry Sasuke and Sakura, would sit and have their first meal, I guess, as Team 7. After Naruto had gulped all his food down, he would ask when their first training session would start. With Team 7 now accepted into the Shinobi Force of the Leaf, we see them attend a line of D-rank missions, especially chosen out for their ease but somewhat competitive nature since they are still accompanied by a Chuni. But Naruto, as you might have thought, had been through many of these missions already and had gotten used to how they worked, thus would take a majority of the workload on himself, giving the team a lot more time to train. As per usual, at first the team would start off with Taijutsu and so on, with the only person really benefiting being Sakura, since Naruto had already had a lot of experience from his prior Sensei Yamato and the vast amount of missions he had been on, and Sasuke being somewhat of a prodigy, being able to pick up really quickly. So, by the time Sakura had gotten it down, Kakashi would confront them about Naruto having to carry the missions per se. So, after the confrontation, Naruto would ease up a bit, and even though he would hate to admit it, as they started working more as a team, begrudgingly, he had started getting along with them, ever so much more. Sasuke, of course, benefits from having a stronger sparring partner, so he grows rather fond of Naruto as well, and long before they even ask for an upgrade to mission, as Sasuke and Sakura would request about... I would say three weeks into their being Team 7, Naruto would actually suggest that they get the most basics of the Shinobi down first. Obviously, they would protest saying they were able to, you know, do everything the Academy required them to, so what more is there, there for them to really learn? Naruto would say, can you climb a tree? With Sakura scolding like always, saying of course I can climb a tree, I'm not a child, as Naruto would proceed to walk up the side of a tree using chakra control. I could go into the exact dialogue between the three, but Kakashi would eventually interrupt and say that Naruto has a point. They would be going over at least tree walking within this one week period with as per usual, Sakura getting it down near immediately, and Naruto dro dropping a few tips to Sasuke, as, once again, they are rather fond of each other here, so this could spiral in many ways. On the other hand, what we're currently 
looking at is Sasuke getting it down probably within the first two or three days, meaning they could start their progress on water walking, which would thus happen. Water walking would come in useful as later of this series, as you might know. So, per usual, they would not finish the water walking training for perhaps Naruto already knowing it, but Sakura and Sasuke are still only adept at best, not being able to, without concentrating, hold the position. So, with this, they would finally have the courage to once again ask Kakashi to up the level of mission they would partake in. Kakashi would give a glance over to Naruto, who would reassure him. Which would lead us to, per usual, get the Land of Waves mission. Almost exactly, the interaction would go down until around, I believe, uh, the Demon Brother saga, or the little Demon Brother arc we had. So, after they had abandoned the leaf, per usual, they would run into a puddle. But this time, both Naruto, Kakashi, and Sasuke would all take notice of this. Of course, Kakashi would still pretend to get hit, but before he even could get hit, Naruto would have surrounded them in wood, preventing them from reaching their sensei, as Sasuke would use this opportunity to blitz them, possibly chaining them instead of to a tree this time to the wooden poles that Naruto had summoned, meaning they are both entrapulated without Kakashi ever needing to take any hits. This, as usual, would lead to the confrontation of both the Demon Brothers, interrogation, and so on, whilst also Gato. But this is where we would find out initially that the Demon Brothers are actually being accompanied by someone. We don't only find out about Gato, but this time about the presence of both Zabuza and Haku. But obviously, Haku and Zabuza are rated as a Chunin and Jonin level fighter, while Team 7 have Kakashi and Naruto presence, who have the same ranking. And plus that, on the other hand, they do have two Genin, who could probably, with ease, take care of Tazuna, as the only threat at that point must be bandits. Plus, Naruto and Kakashi both have access to cloning techniques, so if it comes down to it, this should be pretty okay. But, as per usual, Kakashi would ask the team, with them reassuring and him sending Pakun or the dog summoning to the Hokage to inform him of the changing. And, once again, as per usual, the bridge builder would agree to a prolonged payment over a period of time to repay them for a higher level mission. But thus, we continue the Land of Waves arc, with the next possible change coming in where they arrive in the Land of Waves, being accompanied by Zabuza's sword flying across the sky, nearly decapitating the group. Obviously, the main change being Naruto would not require Sakura's assistance in dodging the blade, and once Zabuza accompanies his blade by landing on top of it, Naruto would follow that up with a wood dome, a large dome protruding around the tree, and Zabuza himself trying to entrap him within so that the group can get their bearings together. So, this would give them enough time to make a formation as Naruto would try and locate Haku. But before he could lay his sensory ability to use, Zabuza would slash a giant X into the dome and uh, kicking out the lowermost triangle would leave him space to exit. He would laugh saying that, oh, you must be Naruto Senju, Nine Tails Jinchuriki, and the grandson of that fifth Hokage of yours. How I'm going to love killing you. You have a massive bounty from the other villages. Obviously meaning they require the tailed beast itself and not Naruto. Also Naruto having a tuning status would probably have some influence to end up in a data book. This is where things would extremely start changing. Obviously, Zabuza would be both combated by Naruto and Kakashi. Kakashi knowing Naruto would not get in the way in this fight, but would instead be a benefit as they could work together to throw Zabuza off. But whilst Naruto is throwing constant wood style jutsu, he is laying his sensory ability to use once again, attempting to find Haku. But, as we now know, with the change of the Demon Brothers actually revealing the inf information, Haku might as well have a hunch that this was the case and would 
most likely still attempt the Hunter Nin thing, but instead would try and jump in front of Naruto and Kakashi and take on Zabuza head on, trying to slash at him. But as he does with a near seeming reaction from Naruto trying to bash in Haku's head with a wooden pole emerging from the ground they would know that the jig is up and thus would start fighting as a group obviously creating a more close match where Zabuza and Haku would still be forced to run away as they had not been expecting this Obviously, Haku would still have, like, held back, not revealing the Demon Ice Mirror quite yet, but would have probably used something like Ice Senbon and one-handed hand seals, meaning Naruto and Kakashi have a lot more information to go off of. But with the emergence of Haku, Kakashi was also required to use his Sharingan as per normal, so would still pass out. From here on to about the start of the training period, things would go almost identical. Obviously, there would still be some form of uh, water prison scene with Naruto and Sasuke working together, but it would most likely not be as big of a deal quite yet. So, as I said, things would go most likely to canon up until the start of the training period, where Sakura and Sasuke probably even before Kakashi wakes up, would have gotten down the water walking exercise under the guidance of Naruto. Naruto would also be exhausted, but not close to the degree of Kakashi since he had used an exterior force being a Sharingan to keep up with the battle. Naruto would probably talk to Kakashi in this period, saying that Kakashi is sloppy without his Sharingan and should probably work on fighting without it. So maybe Kakashi himself can benefit from training in this period. Once again, since Naruto was here, Kakashi would not have been completely as injured and would actually be able to partake in training. So, while Sasuke and Sakura had figured out how to water walk, Naruto would have prepped Kakashi for training himself, but in this period, they would be fluctuating training. They need Sakura more on Taijutsu than anything else since teaching her something completely from scratch will be useless, but nearing the end period, they might have taught her the most simple of Genjutsu. But on the other hand, the short period or the short amount of time that Naruto and Sasuke had spent together, Naruto would have revealed that he has a form of deep forest emergence that is just not quite as effective, only springing a line of trees and not an entire forest. But nonetheless, Naruto and Sasuke are able to figure out a combo move, which they will later on use. And once again, saying the word on the other hand, and once again, we see that Naruto and Kakashi had in fact trained together, getting Kakashi's skill in both Taijutsu and avoiding certain jutsu up to standards, with Naruto using his knowledge of current water style to uh, combat against Kakashi's. Obviously, Kakashi would reveal the lightning blade, and they would come up with a way to use this against Zabuza. So, here we get to skip forward to the second Zabuza encounter, all going pretty much to canon at this point, with Naruto leaving a clone or a wood clone, which can actually take more than one hit, behind to take care of the bridge builder's family, having a hunch that something like this might happen. As the team arrives back at the Land of Waves, their suspicion had come true and Zabuza and Haku would stand there present, also leaving Naruto's clones to, as usual, deal with the intruding bandits, saving both Tsunami and Tanori, the bridge builder's daughter and grandson, once again gaining Naruto that respect. On the other hand, Naruto, Sasuke, Kakashi, and Sakura would all stand in formation as they prepare for this battle. Sakura would be forced to stand back as she would be asked to handle the entire interaction with the bridge builder and make sure that there are no surprise attacks from any bandits. While Haku would be left to both Naruto and Sasuke as Kakashi would request to be left alone with Zabuza. In this case, I think Sasuke would be a much greater matchup against Haku, seeing as he would have gone through massive amounts of chakra enhancement, like training throughout that one week period after having learned water walking through Naruto and Kakashi's suggestion, 
after seeing Haku speed the first time. So, as you might have thought, we would be going over the Sasuke Naruto versus Haku fight first. Knowing that Naruto himself is very fast, Haku wouldn't immediately resort to going into the Demon Ice Mirrors, rather using it more of a final resort. Instead, starting off with probably hundreds if not thousands of Ice Senbon and so on and so forth, as he would try and attempt to lure them into getting hit at least once, since every hit would make them factually weaker and slower, and then much e more easily trapped within the Demon Ice Mirror. As they aren't very often in the same vicinity, this becomes progressively harder. But nonetheless, Haku would probably land quite a few hits on Sasuke, which Naruto would probably use as some sort of uh, eco downgrade for Sasuke, throwing shade at him like, why are you getting so uh, hit so often, Uchiha boy? I thought you were supposed to uh, gain some magical eyes that let you move faster like Sensei does, and so on and so forth. With Sasuke throwing the occasional jab back at Naruto, saying the only reason he hasn't been hit is because he's running away from the fight. Thus, we still have that dynamic between Naruto and Sasuke, obviously being a more friendly rivalry than it was in canon. So, in this instant, Naruto would eventually get hit and basically shot on by Sasuke as they would finally get lured into that corner after having hit probably Haku a lot more than he hit them, they would once again be trapped in the Demon Ice Mirror. And near a second close to Sasuke getting hit, he would awaken his Sharingan. Haku did not even try to avoid the inevitable and directly went for a hit on Sasuke, who was clearly the lesser opponent and would be less, um, how do I say it, less difficult to get rid of. Meaning, Sasuke would be able to unlock his Sharingan, once again taking a slice to the face as he does in canon, leaving Naruto to try and defend him, which more likely than not would leave Naruto getting not an entire body full of Senmon, but an arm this time. Sasuke would freak out and try to go off on Haku, while Naruto would insist that he is okay. He would try to combat this as one of his arms are almost completely limp, and he could barely form hand seals, making it really hard for him to be able to use wood style. Meaning, more often than not, he is just using taijutsu and using his enhanced sensory to avoid Haku. But nevertheless, Naruto would eventually get slower and almost be hit, being saved by Sasuke, still getting basically fully emerged with Senbon, leaving Naruto with a rage moment where Ninetales Chakra would course through his body. Obviously, normally, uh, Ninetales Chakra would be suppressed by wood style, but in this case, it's actually enhanced. Pull out of the seal on nearby force because of the Keki Genkai, Naruto would actually get a full cloak of the Ninetales Chakra. This would lead in his body expanding constantly, which or retracting and expanding constantly, which would lead to the Senbon firing out of his arm. He would jump back as he formed some hand signs, screaming, Deep Forest Emergence, creating a larger tree line than he usually could, and with using uh, the substitution jutsu, Sasuke is able to get out of the line thanks to Naruto, leaving a fireball to not only eradicate the Demon Ice Mirror at a very high level with all the constant source for the fire to spread, but inevitably would hit Haku. Which now would leave us with the Kakashi vs Zabuza fight to go over. This fight would more or less go to canon, but with the exception of Kakashi being able to save up on a lot of chakra, not using the Sharingan off the bat. He had gotten used to performing water style jutsu without using his Sharingan, so he was able to conserve a lot of energy fighting Zabuza. Using his naturally fast hand signs, he was able to outspeed Zabuza on any water dragon clash or water jutsu usage, leaving both Kakashi and Zabuza in a pretty close vicinity in power without even Kakashi needing to activate his Sharingan. So when Kakashi inevitably did activate his Sharingan, he had a much 
larger advantage, being able to quickly make the upper hand on Zabuza and attacking him ruthlessly, eventually using his dogs to clamp down on Zabuza as he would try to attack. But this is where we, as per usual, lead to Haku jumping in the way, taking a Chidori and dying for Zabuza. With the only real change here being Naruto not completely raging out as he did in fact not have that moment with Haku. In fact, no one had any other interaction with Haku as they were aware to his presence. On the other hand, we still follow the basic line of Zabuza requesting to be able to kill Gato as Gato would per usual on his giant boat appear on the pier, trying to kill both Zabuza and the Team 7 that had been sent to protect the bridge builder, as they're too useless to do anything or so on and so forth, leading to Zabuza cutting through many shinobi along the help of Team 7, which Sakura finally gets to jump in and take out a few bandits as they would clear the entire camp, leaving only Gato. Zabuza would finally be buried without Gato being taken out, but instead left for the villagers to deal with, as he was tied to a stump in the middle of town to be berated and humiliated all the villagers wanted to, and would one night randomly appear dead. On the other hand, the time remaining on the bridge's building would be used just as efficiently as it originally was, but this time we have a period more peaceful, so the group was able to split in two. But instead of the training period that you are expecting, what in fact would happen is the two teams or the split team, two groups, would take chances clearing out the remaining of Gato's hideouts of both bandits and funds as all that money would be re-given or just returned to the residents of the Land of Waves as they would use it to once again make their town slash village a trading nation. And along with this, Team 7 get their uh, appropriate pay, I guess, which they would thus return to the Hokage. But before they return to the Hokage, we have that ever-memorable moment where the bridge would have been named after Naruto. But for Naruto's request, it is named after a great man he once knew, who Naruto claims, if had been still around, could have solved all their problems in a mere moment. And thus, the bridge would have been named after Tenzo, the Great Tenzo Bridge. Kakashi obviously being the only other person knowing why Naruto did this would obviously console him saying that it was a good decision and he kind of likes the name. But Sasuke and Sakura, Sasuke probably just brooding, and Sakura who would actually speak up saying we should have called it like the Great Team 7 Bridge or something, or the Great Sasuke Bridge or so on and so forth. But this would lead Naruto to turn around and giving Sakura a speech she'll never forget, saying as she should stop simping for Sasuke, or at least stop going after him, as he's clearly not interested. And with a near evil look on his face, as if he was about to murder Sakura on the spot, he would say, also, if you ever say something like that about my sensei again, about his name being boring... I'll make sure your head touches the ground, whilst your body stands straight up. Obviously being a clear declaration or threat of war. So, Sakura, being kind of scared of the nullifications, would refrain from talking to Sasuke for a few days, and would actually be left to think. Obviously, first we must go over the reward. Obviously, Team 7 being congratulated on the first of their... Uh, I could say generation, meaning their year of the academy, to take on this high of a level mission. Obviously, not having been a D or a C rank, but in fact a B or an A rank, depending on how they might score it. So, with this period we have left for Sakura to think, I would actually like to give some character progression. She would not only take into account why Naruto was so serious, which is what the thought would start off like, why is that guy so stuck up? Always so serious. Which would lead her to come to the realization of Yamato and what he meant to Naruto. 
she would think back and how he say, uh, said if he was still around, meaning he had probably passed away, leaving Sakura to sympathize for a second, which would let Naruto's words about her chasing after Sasuke mindlessly also sink in. And she would decide that she might stop chasing after Sasuke, but in fact, if he doesn't want her, let him be happy. So he would, she would stop bugging Sasuke all the time. By now, a day or two had passed since the entire Zabuza retrieval arc had finished, and Naruto would actually remember that this is around the time the tuning exams start up. So he would sought out his sensei to ask him about his team. Obviously, it would take him a while to find Kakashi, but as you might have wondered, he would find him at the memorial site as per usual. And when he does go up to Kakashi, both of them would stand there for a while in silence until they would finally speak. Actually, it would be Kakashi to start the conversation this time, obviously giving some sort of condolences towards Yamato and explain that they had actually served on the Anbu together, while Naruto would reciprocate this, saying that he knows Kakashi had obviously not only lost his sensei, the fourth Hokage, but also his two teammates. So, after a while passes after this once again, Kakashi would finally ask what Naruto wants, and Naruto would reciprocate, saying that he is wondering about the upcoming Chunin exams and if Kakashi is going to allow Team 7 to participate. Kakashi would actually be caught off guard as he hadn't thought about it up until this point, with Naruto actually backing his team, thinking they have made some good progress and should be on the level where they can participate. Kakashi would ask Naruto if he's serious since he was able to wipe out the entirety of his tuning exams literally single-handedly, so why would he put his team on that level too? He would obviously first laugh and say of course he doesn't put his team on that level, but he does think they could accomplish everything and even have the potential to get the rank of tuning. Where he got it through pure power, Sakura would probably be able to get it through uh, planning and just general smarts, and Sasuke is enough of a prodigy to be able to handle anything this generation has to throw at him, obviously, except he himself. Kakashi would be surprised by Naruto saying all this, but would actually accept Naruto's request and would say he would allow them to enter the tuning exams, but they would be at a disadvantage being only a two-man team. Also, Kakashi doesn't even think two-man teams are currently allowed, with Naruto saying, oh yeah, that entire situation with me happened. With a back and forth between Kakashi and Naruto, when they said when they would decide that a Team 7 may participate if they can find a third member. But before that, Naruto actually suggests instead of waking, waiting out the week period, Kakashi recalls them not for missions, but instead for training. Sure, five days isn't a lot for training, but they could push in some last minute information that would be really needed. And as you might have thought, this would lead to Kakashi calling on both Sasuke and Sakura to start up training. In this case, we would actually start off for Sasuke, some training he would not have originally had until the one month time skip. Obviously, this would be more chakra enhancement training like in the Land of Waves, but in this time, prep for the Chidori. Meaning a majority of Sasuke's training would actually be with Kakashi, which leaves Naruto to do with Sakura as he pleases. Do not take that out of context. He would actually put her through significant training as he would push her to her physical limit, constantly reminding her that she is physically weaker than probably anyone in her generation and she doesn't really have any ninjutsu to back it. So he would create three wood clones and tell her when she can uh, if she could defeat them by the end of this period, she's ready to enter the tuning exams. But if she doesn't, he will tell Kakashi to recall her. So Sakura, with some new motive, and even Naruto somewhat telling her what to do every now and then, she would make use of everything in her book, be it the transformation jutsu, similar to how Naruto used it in canon during the... Uh, I believe Zabuza arc where he had created a clone and used it to transform himself into a shuriken but instead of what she would do is she would use the academy style clones which is not but an illusion and the transformation jutsu to confuse Naruto. 
Obviously, she could use this to somewhat turn into Naruto to create some sort of false appearance acting like one of the clones, which would cause a confusion, like a confusion, which might also lead to them attacking each other. But Naruto having a sensory ability should possibly be able to take care of this pretty easily. So when it comes down to it, Sakura would never actually be able to destroy all three clones, maybe one or two, even awakening her monstrous strength early. And with that, that's basically the training period. She wouldn't actually be able to destroy all three, never actually more than one, but through confusion tactics and all around physical strength improvements, she gains Naruto's approval and would be allowed to join the training exams. But with this coming to a close, Sasuke not really gaining anything new except him finding out about his lightning affinity and possibly a single lightning jutsu, much easier than the Chidori being the lightning arc, we have to get into that last problem, finding a third member for their group. They would be sent out into the village as it is their problem, meaning they are on a last day scenario to find a partner for the tuning exams. So, whilst they are out and about, the Hokage, as per usual, would recall the Jonin senseis to find out which teams will be participating, being surprised that all the uh, new rookie teams would actually be there, or at least the three head teams being that of, of course, Kakashi, Asuma, and Kurenai. So... Obviously, Haruzen would ask if Kakashi had found a suitable member to replace Naruto as he is already a tuning, with Kakashi saying they will take care of it. This leads us to obviously the person we might be wondering is going to take over. After hours of searching near night comes, they would have asked hundreds of other Genin to participate with them, but a lot of them either already had a team to participate with, just weren't interested in participating, weren't interested in participating with these select individuals, or weren't clear to enter. But they do inevitably run into one person. This is around the time they meet back up. And instead of directly running into them or discovering them, they would have met back up at a place to eat, as Sasuke would find Sakura recently more bearable, as he had she hadn't been pestering him at all actually she barely even talked to him and in this case she would actually offer to pay for whatever dish they are eating and they would start asking each other if they had any luck which would result in someone overhearing their search i guess for a third team member which would approach them this is someone significantly older than them not someone close to the age of kakashi but still a few years older than sakura and sasuke he had a white hair and a leaf headband with glasses he would push up said glasses as he would offer to join at first they would be skeptical and ask who he is he would reveal himself to be kabuto he would also explain that he had entered the tuning exams multiple times and give us that entire spiel he did in canon he would reveal some information on some of the participants he can guarantee to be there, as well as a possible test for the first, of course, as he doesn't want to reveal too much ahead of schedule. You might be wondering why Kabuto was doing this, as originally he had his own team, but the answer is quite clear. With Naruto's absence, Orochimaru saw this as an opportunity and would have commanded Kabuto to try and join their group. And Kabuto had actually been s surveying them mostly the whole day as he would have looked for an opportunity, leaving us with the entrance to the tuning exams. As the next day comes and the new team consisting of Sasuke, Sakura, and Kabuto approach the academy, they'd be surprised to find Naruto and Kakashi there. Of course, this would start with an interaction between Naruto and Kabuto as they actually know each other not only from missions they gone on together, but also the fact that they had faced off against each other in Naruto's tuning exam. Even though Kabuto had performed pretty well up until his encounter with Naruto, he had still not become a Chunin in any of the ones he had participated in. Along with this, the team comes to be relieved as Naruto and Kakashi are actually there to give them their entrance papers, even if only last minute, since they wouldn't actually be able to participate without the papers signed. 
So, by following up on this and signing the papers, the team would make their way into the academy and as per usual would walk up to the second floor where they would see two people standing in front of a room with a group of genin surrounding them. Kabuto, who's already seen this more than once, and Sasuke and Sakura, who would pretty easily be able to pick up on Genjutsu, would notice and ignore this, as they would just walk by. And, exactly as canon, Lee would actually approach Sasuke wanting a challenge. Kabuto would step in suggesting that they postpone this until the final rounds of the tuning exams, since if both of them are separately so well oriented, they will meet in the finals. So, Lee at first would not accept this, but inevitably, when Sasuke would step up to the challenge, since he does want to test the new skills he had got because of Kakashi, he would still be beaten, not as narrowly as he was originally, but actually lasting a bit longer and almost matching Lee's speed. Along with this, having his second Tomo in his Sharingan helped him keep up quite a bit. But inevitably, he would almost be slammed into the ground, only to be saved by Guy Sensei stopping Lee, having that entire interaction. As they continue to the next room, Kabuto would advise them to lay low from here on going forward, as they had already displayed some of their skills to other teams. So, minding their business from here on would highly benefit them since there are combat scenarios later on. And, as you might guess, the only big difference here is the amount of teams that are going to end up within the finals, since a lot of teams had actually stayed present because of Naruto's speech at the end of the first exam. Sakura would still be able to mentally power through these questions, while Sasuke would use his Sharingan to copy someone else. On the other hand, Kabuto had probably done this test before, or at least has the knowledge to fill it out, so there would be no big problem, meaning that their team, without the original Naruto in it, was actually better off for this first exam, and even cut down on more shinobi, leaving a lot less people to challenge them. So, we would go into the second exam, where the next big change goes, that we don't actually see the abundant presence of Orochimaru, since, obviously, Naruto had not gotten a kunai thrown at him by Anko. So the explanation goes over pretty well and each team makes their way to their gate as the exams would begin. And as you might think, nothing really changes for this except the fact that the rain genin would probably be a much bigger threat and when Orochimaru shows up, even though Kabuto would pick up a fight, he would probably be immobilized pretty easy. Still, as per usual, this would leave Sasuke with a curse mark and a heavily injured Sakura and Kabuto. Kabuto obviously not as injured as you might think, as he could heal all the low rating injuries that he had gotten. Sasuke on the other hand is out cold, and Kabuto would pretend to be healing him, as he actually does want him to wake up, but not until the sound genin show up. On the other hand, he's able to perfectly heal both himself and Sakura, meaning that the trap set up for the sound genin would be a lot more pronounced. This would also mean that people like Lee would actually not have to interfere, as when the sound genin show up, Kabuto and Sakura would give off some sort of fight, and Kabuto, who had healed Sasuke just enough to wake up during this moment, meaning he would awaken his curse mark for the first time, and still as brutally beating the sound genin as he originally did, but this time with Naruto and Sakura not actually trying to hold him back. Obviously, he doesn't kill anyone since Kabuto would most likely stop him, but the rest of the Konoha 12 that had been present just watching on in fear, as this was not necessarily expected, with obviously Hinata, Kiba, and Shino being non-present in this situation, but Shikamaru's team and the uh, Guy team still watching, even if only from afar. So this leads us into the semi-finals, as everything from here on going forward would be pretty much smooth sailing, as Naruto not being there means they most likely didn't lose their scroll, not leaving for as much opportunities for the tuning exams to be drawn out, meaning our next major event means what the hell is going to happen without Naruto present in the semi-finals. Obviously, Sasuke would not be able to get his curse mark sealed quite yet, as they would have to wait until after this test, and Kabuto would take Naruto's place. 
he kind of rooted himself into this team, gaining both trust from Sakura and Sasuke, meaning even a possible larger connection for him and Sasuke larger on. So in this scenario, he would actually not give up as he wants to make it seem like he does want to become a Chunin, meaning he would be faced off against Kiba and would sadly lose to Kiba. But he would make the promise that he would cheer on both Sasuke and Sakura from the sidelines. I know y'all might be thinking that, yo, Sakura is a little bit more useful and Sasuke is a lot faster. So why couldn't they get away from Orochimaru? And the 100% fact is the giant snake that originally consumed Naruto would have been more present here since Naruto would not have been there to dispel it. Moving on, we see, once again, as I said... Kabuto losing against Kiba, as that is kind of the way he's going to get out. He would have made it apparent that he was trying, even though he was clearly not, not revealing things like offensive chakra scalpels, but instead trying to avoid attacks and land the occasional one. But nevertheless, this still ends in his loss, and Sakura and Sasuke's fight go near canon, except for Sakura, who would be able to pull out a win, using her maneuvers to confuse Eno, meaning she never got caught in the mind transfer, or at least not till later on, using that true plot armor to break free. But she does inevitably, and wins over Eno, meaning that, in this case, Sakura is actually moving on to the finals. And with Sakura and Kiba moving on to the finals, that leaves us with two new matchups for said finals. This time, Sakura would actually be facing off against Neji, and as a fellow female supporter, she would have actually had it in for Neji after what he did to Hinata. And she would have even stepped in instead of Naruto when the final moment hit. On the other hand, we also see Kiba being uh, paired up against Dosu, while on the other hand, Shino gets the bye, or he would have originally gone against Konkuro, who had forfeited in their match, meaning he still kind of gets a bye. So, let's move on to the one month time skip. Before their training period for the tuning exams finals begin, the team would collectively, I guess, grief in a sort for Kabuto not making it to the finals, since in his own words, this is the seventh time he's attempted to become a tuning. But even though he had failed, he would still be rooting for the group from the sidelines. This would obviously have Sakura say some nice things for once, as Sasuke would be his normal brooding self. This would lead to them splitting up with Sakura and Sasuke both being really hyped for what's to come, since both of them do want to become Chunin so that they can go on harder missions like Naruto used to, as he would have told them tales of some of the missions he had gone on. Along with this, they would obviously want to train and would ask their sensei Kakashi what lies in front of them. Kakashi would reveal that he wants to teach Sasuke the Chidori, the technique that he had used prior in the Land of Waves. Sasuke, being all too happy to do this, since his speed had already been upped, would obviously go along. And with this occurring, this would lead to Sasuke splitting paths from Naruto and Sakura, as Kakashi would take him to a remote area where they could train. At first, Sakura would seem down as it would look like Naruto wouldn't be able to teach her since he'd bring up that he has a mission. She would ask him if he knows of anyone else that could teach her when he says that I wasn't planning on letting anyone else teach you. So she would think that he obviously meant no one would be teaching her, which she would then start sulking when Naruto would reveal that she would be accompanying him on the mission. It's a simple wiping out bandits and along the way there, he could teach her some useful things. And depending on how she does on the mission, he might even teach her some more advanced things. So, about a day's walk out of the village after prep time, Naruto and Sakura's training would be the only one we're actually going over in detail. Naruto would be asking Sakura to do certain things, like Genjutsu spot certain areas that he assumes are already genjutsu which would reveal some traps obviously set by another shinobi, and so on and so forth. 
And along with that, he would continuously ask her to analyze the area and situation and determine what would happen on the mission. This leaves Sakura's brilliant mind to shine as she would point out things she's noticed, like the Genjutsu traps would imply that a shinobi is present, while the bandits might have more than one shinobi, it should still be easy going since none of this seems to be too advanced. Even the Genjutsu was easily broken by a Genin on her level, meaning this should be a breeze. She would obviously bring up some things like her lack of physical strength when Naruto would basically start teaching her how to enhance her body, similar to how Sasuke had learned that originally. Naruto up until this point had only been grinding her physical body and not her chakra implications on it, so this would give her a great advantage. And since this bandit camp is about an entire day out of the leaf, by the time they had gotten there she would be eager to test out her skills. This would lead the young Konoichi to make a rather rash decision and a very stupid judgment as she would lose the attempt to surprise them by leaping out of the trees and revealing her chakra signature. If she had stayed suppressed and attempted to sneak up on one of the shinobi, this would have ended a lot better. It would be revealed that both of the shinobi currently present are both Chunin level. So, Naruto would at first be forced to watch, since interfering could also cost him his life. So, he would see Sakura actually attempting to fight off not only bandits, which come pretty easily, but also the Chunin present. One of them would step up to face against her and would point out that she's too lackluster experienced to be a Chunin, so he's assuming that she's a Genin. He would go on to berate the leaf as she would be able to strike him unexpectedly, doing a pretty hefty blow. Along with this, Naruto would see his opportunity using a wood style jutsu to trap the shinobi's arms in place so that he cannot cast anything to break loose. And along with this action, he would break his cover to help Sakura. She would at first throw some shade at Naruto for not helping her immediately when he revealed he was looking for an opportunity, something she should have done. He would at first scold her and, and eventually congratulate her since she did take the opportunity well to get rid of the opponent, knowing that Naruto was there to back her up. This means that they are currently in a situation where they have an advantage, having taken out one of the Chunin and having both a Genin and Chunin present. Naruto would demand that Sakura goes out to dispatch of the bandits while he takes care of this situation. And against Naruto's better judgment, he would face off against the shinobi who would prove to have a fire type elemental release and some fire type jutsu, meaning at first he would struggle. Eventually, when he would see openings, he would actually use wood style, but on any other occasion, he would be using water to directly counter. And eventually, he would see a more than promising opening, taking this to throw out his rendition of a minor great forest devastation, which is a line of trees being thrown towards your opponent, which he would obviously take the opportunity to burn in attempts to hurt Naruto, but when the shinobi lands, he would unexpectedly be drawn under the ground. Seeing this, Sakura would divert her attention, throwing a kunai in the direction of where the shinobi's head would be stopped, killing him in place. This would technically be the first time where Sakura hand-on kills a shinobi, so she would kind of be stunned for a second, to only be hit by a bandit and slashed across the arm pretty badly. This would lead Naruto to need to help her and eventually clearing the bandit camp, with a dead and captured shinobi present. Naruto, because Sakura had taken the kill, would offer her his bounty, which she would take, feeling that it is her duty as a shinobi to still do this. But nevertheless, she is rather shocked. And after all the opponents are subdued, Naruto would attempt to appeal medical ointments and so on and so forth. This would leave Sakura with a long-lasting scar on her arm and now the presence of bandages going along her right arm. So, from here on splitting forward, Naruto would be going into more strict tests, actually using himself over clones to punish Sakura as much as possible, giving him the ultimate result he wanted. He didn't want her to learn any jutsu, but instead fear pure chakra enhancement, something similar to what Sasuke was doing in the Land of Waves, but to a much higher degree. 
this would actually seem fruitful as Sakura would appear to take this to head leaving behind or leaving the training behind with an immense strength level somewhat similar to what she had by the time Shippuden rolled around and a much higher speed than she had at that point, meaning she is currently better off than she was canonically, and thus she would leave to go to the tuning exams. On the other hand, Sasuke had actually had more time to do things since he had started his Shidori training technically early, getting a lot of the earlier steps done, leaving him to learn some more techniques like, first of all, awakening his third Tomo Sharingan whilst simultaneously learning a lot quicker lightning moves that don't require as much prep as the Chidori and can be used before, after, or even in some sort of combo along with it. And as the training period comes to an end, this would lead us to a drastically changed tuning exam, except for a few things that I don't logically see changing. For example, the killing of Dosu by Gara, meaning that this would still be a Sakura versus Neji situation. Along with that, the pairings for Shikamaru versus Tamari and Sasuke versus Gara would still happen. As per usual, Konkuro would drop out, giving Shino a pass on this round. So, moving on, we would start off our version of the tuning exams with the Sakura vs Neji fight, which as you might guess is going to be a unique spectacle to see, as Neji is so overwhelmingly more powerful than Sakura at this point in time. This would obviously start off with Neji giving some destiny banter about how Sakura wasn't destined to be anything and so on and so forth, with Sakura constantly throwing shots back. She at first would not be using her enhanced strength and speed to the same degree, but instead using her chakra for defense against Neji, since palm strikes do per usual disrupt your chakra points, meaning if she does not time everything exactly right, she would be kind of screwed. She would also proceed to use things like normal clones, which would be insufficient, and basic shinobi stealth tactics. Along with her using stealth tactics and clones to even temporarily fool Neji, she would be able to place some traps that are seen and some that are not, as she is being pretty rapid and fast about this. Which would lead Neji to obviously avoid those he knows of, but occasionally get scarred from those that aren't. Neji would not necessarily be up for using any technique like, let's say, the palm rotation, which he wouldn't in fact need to use quite yet, as he would first attempt to completely destroy Sakura off the bat, going from the 32 palms up to the 64. And as per usual, he would impress all the Hugas in the stand, really proving that he is this generation's genius of the Hyuga. On the other hand, Sakura would be able to channel her chakra to be able to pop open her chakra points and continue the fight. This would obviously impress Neji, but not to the point where he would give her any sort of recognition, but instead continue to fight. This would lead to eventually a large majority of kunai being flung from a trap at Neji, forcing him to counter with a palm rotation, revealing his ultimate technique not only to the Hyuga, but to Sakura. Not Thinking that this is anything, she would actually rush in, and in a moment of pure luck as he fades out of the technique, she is able to land one solid hit that knocked him nearly as hard as Sakura knocked that boulder in Shippuden, meaning Neji is pretty much down for the count. Obviously, I don't think she would be able to defeat him completely with this hit, but she would immediately walk up to him. This would be an exchange of word where he says he's about to get up and he's about to destroy her and everything she stands for, but before he could even attempt to, she would give him his own speech about destiny, but in reverse, basically breaking his beliefs, saying that if she was destined to lose here to him, she wouldn't take that. She personally thinks that she could uh, craft her own destiny going forward, and with that she would raise her hand, calling that she forfeits. This would be a surprise not only to Neji, the proctor, and everyone in the audience since it clearly looked as if she had one strike left to finish him off. This would in turn cause us to go on to the next round, giving Shino the bye as Konkuro would admit he would not be fighting, and Shikamaru and Tamari's fight going near canon. 
but where things really do get interesting is the Garo versus Sasuke fight. Since Sasuke had more time to work on his speed and even had more area of effect jutsu he could use against Gara, I think things would go a little smoother but would obviously lead to the same situation as it originally did, with Gara going berserk, the genjutsu dropping and Sasuke chasing after him. But yeah, with that, this video will be coming to a close. I really do hope y'all enjoyed What If Naruto Was a Senju the Movie. Uh, remember, once again, we will be redoing this series in a singular long form video in the near future. I will be making an announcement about that over on the community tab. So make sure to keep an eye open to anyone who is wondering what's going to replace this series. Uh, I have two upcoming series. One that's going to replace this series, which is what if Naruto had a curse mark that you should see on screen right now. And the other is going to replace the other series we have going right now, Dark Matter Naruto. Uh, that's going to be what if Rin raised Naruto that's over on the community tab for anyone that's interested. Make sure to hit that bell notification so that you are notified when they do release. But yeah, I do have my Discord linked down below. All the art you see in this video, apart from the manga panels displayed in the edit, were made by yours truly and if you want to commission any art from me go check out my fiverr link down in the description this has been your boy six peace until next time nerds we'll meet again in the virtual world where heroes ascend keep the flame of adventure burning bright until next time nerds let's take flight